very good morning friends so i hope you're all doing well as well as safe well in this particular month i started off my videos on indus 12 and in the previous video i gave you insight regarding the five step model which i follow for the application of deferred tax calculation just to remind you quickly on the five step model i said the step number one is getting the carrying amount of the asset liability the step number two is getting a tax base of the asset liability. Step number three is getting a difference, what you call a temporary difference, taxable or deductible in nature. Step number four is calculating the amount of deferred tax asset or liability by applying a tax rate to that temporary difference. And then finally, step number five, deciding where are we supposed to recognize the deferred tax. But I thought before we discuss the five step model in detail, I think the first thing what we need to understand in terms of Indus 12 is that there are two approaches in terms of Indus 12. When you're calculating a deferred tax or a deferred tax asset or liability, there is a balance sheet approach and there is an income statement approach. So in this particular video, what I'm going to do, I'm going to first of all discuss the two approaches which are there in terms of calculating a deferred tax and Indus 12 endorses which particular approach. Let's find this out in this particular video. Aksar bache, ek baat kehte hai, Sir, I had 6 months ki subscription li thi, aur mera aap thoda sa course baaki reh gaya, ab mein kya karo? Bhai, ab aapko chinta karne ki zhurut nahi hai, kyunke an academy par aap apni subscription agar plan karte hai, 8 June tak, 8 June se pehre pehre, तो चाहे आप प्लस बैचेस या आइकॉनिक बैचेस सब्सक्राइब कीजिए इसके अंदर आपको 6 मंथ्स पर 1 मंथ एक्स्ट्रा मिलेगा 12 मंथ्स पर भी आपको 1 मंथ एक्स्ट्रा मिलेगा और अगर आप 24 मंथ्स का प्लान कर रहे हैं तो उस पर आपको 2 मंथ्स एक्स्ट्रा मिलेंगे ना केवल एडिशनल मंथ्स लेकिन अगर आप इसके अंदर एक कोड इस्तेमाल करते हैं अपने फेवरेट एजुकेटर का कोड इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं मेरा कोड है CAKB10 और इस पर आपको 10% इमीडिएट डिस्काउंट भी मिलेगा इसका मतलब एडिशनल मंथ्स भी मिल गए और साथ में आपको 10% डिस्काउंट भी मिल गया लेकिन 8th जून से पहले पहले मतलब 8 जून तक ये आप ऑफर अवेल कर सकते हैं तो भाई किस बात का इंतजार कर रहे हैं आइए लेट्स क्रैक इट वेल कंसीडरिंग द नॉलेज यू माइट हैव गॉट इन टर्म्स ऑफ स्टडीइंग अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड 22 which also used to deal with the concept of deferred tax and now if you consider Indus, that is Indus 12 well there are same standards you can say that they are both dealing with the deferred tax but they are based on a total different approach altogether when you look at the IGAP position that is accounting standard 22 the way a deferred tax used to be calculated was purely based on comparing the incomes and expenses from the accounting and from the taxation point of view. So we basically call this as a income statement approach. That means you are comparing that what is the amount of income from the accounting and taxation angle or what is the amount of expense from the accounting and a taxation angle and you are comparing those income and expenses and getting a deferred tax asset or liability as the case might be. But Indus 12 is not based on an income statement approach. It uses the concept of what we call a balance sheet approach. Instead of comparing the incomes and expense, we compare the value of the assets as per the books of accounts and as per tax. We compare the value of the liabilities as per the books of accounts and as per tax. That's the reason we've got a step number one and two that you need to compare the carrying amount of the asset and liability versus the tax base of the asset and liability. But the question what comes to the mind is, are the two approaches going to give you different answers? Are they going to give you same answers? Well, I can say that the balance sheet approach is a much wider approach. There are a couple of differences which would be classified as no difference under the income statement approach, but these differences will be treated as a presence of a difference in a balance sheet approach. For example, let's say for example, if you revalue an asset, when you revalue the asset, the revaluation increase is not taken in the income statement in IGAP. 
So when you revalue the asset, I mean, there is no consequential impact on the income statement from the accounting or from the taxation point of view, resulting in no difference and resulting in no deferred tax asset and liability. But if you look at the balance sheet approach, if you're going to revalue the asset, it would increase the carrying value of the asset in the balance sheet. But for the purposes of taxation, revaluation is ignored. So there will be a difference in terms of the carrying value of the asset and you can say the tax base of the asset resulting in consequential deferred tax implications. So which means that when we were applying an income statement approach and now when we're going to apply a balance sheet approach, a balance sheet approach is much wider. You can say many, many cases, the results which an income statement approach gives and a balance sheet approach gives would be same. So, but there would be a lot of cases where, you know, a income statement approach will tell you that there are no differences as the example I gave you and a balance sheet approach would give you that yes, there are differences. So considering that the international standard IES 12 and the Indian standard that is Indus 12 are both based on a balance sheet approach. So in order to calculate a deferred tax, we'll compare the book value of the asset and liability vis vis you can say the tax base of the asset and liability. So now the question rises, how do you calculate the carrying amount? Well, that would be with reference to the relevant standards. But the question is, how do you calculate a tax base of the asset and liability in order to apply a deferred tax? Now, that is what my agenda in the coming videos is going to be. We're going to throw light in terms of how to calculate a tax base of an asset as well as a liability. That's all in this particular video. Wait for some more interesting concepts coming on this particular standard. Thank you for watching. Take care and bye-bye.